If you've been around for a while, you know that we have these things called blend modes. And they can be kind of confusing. Even if you know what each of them does, it's still pretty hard to put them to practical use. Therefore, you waste a lot of time figuring out which blend mode to use for your work. Then you go on YouTube and all the information is tailored around Photoshop artists and photo editors. So this time, I'm going to teach you all the blending modes that you're going to need as a 3D artist. How to use them and when to use them with actual practical scenarios. It's starting simple with add and subtract. So let's say I want to make a rocky ground. I already have the ground texture and I want to add this rock texture onto it. The way I would do that is by using the add blending mode. So here I have my rock as well as my ground texture. Now I plug my rock into socket A and my ground into socket B. With the blending mode set to add and the factor set all the way to 1 for the full effect. And now as you can see the rock is sitting on top of our ground texture. That's because black has a value of 0 and white has a value of 1. So when we add them together, we are basically doing a first grade math operation. One thing about the add blending mode is that the order of the textures doesn't matter. As I'm changing the orders, you can see that there's clearly no difference. Because x plus y is the same as y plus x. We call this commutative. One thing to keep in mind is that if we have a texture with parts that are 100% white, adding another texture on top of it will not make any difference to those parts. You can imagine that going beyond something that is already pure white is impossible. Why isn't it possible? Because masks are in a value between 0 to 1. This is called low dynamic range. Unless we're working with things like displacement, because displacement uses a high dynamic range, which we'll get into after we talk about subtract. Subtract is just like add, but you know, the opposite. Here I have a circle and a smiley face. Now if I plug my circle to socket A and my smiley face to socket B, we get a whole head. One key difference is that unlike the add blending mode, the order of your inputs does matter. If I now change the orders, the result becomes totally black, because we're now subtracting the face with the circle. This is called non-commutative. Now let's see how we can use them with displacement. Going back to our rocky ground example, if we plug it into our displacement, we would obviously see displacement, we already know that. But watch what happens when I add the rocks to my ground texture once again. It becomes taller, even though it's already outside of its 0 to 1 range. So now I can add rocks as many times as I want and it will still get taller and taller. That's because we're working in a high dynamic range environment. Now that you know how low and high dynamic ranges work, let's get to the other blending modes like multiply and divide. Let's start with multiply because it's easier to explain. Let's say I have this circle and I also have this noise texture. And I want the noise to appear only where my circle is. For that, I can use the multiply blending mode. Because the outside of our circle is black, as we talked about, black means zero. When I multiply my circle with my noise, the noise will only appear where the circle is because 0 multiplied by anything is still 0 and anything multiplied by 1 will be untouched. So as you may have already guessed, here the order of the textures doesn't matter. As another example, here I have made a mask that highlights the sharp edges of my model. Now what I want to do is to break up this mask so it will look more realistic, as if the model has some edge wear. I can do that once again by using a noise texture mixed with my previous mask using the multiply blending mode. And as for divide, on paper it's essentially the same divide that you learned in school, but when you try to use it as a blending mode, it's just so tricky to use that I don't really recommend it. But there is still a use case for it. If you bring out two almost identical noise textures 
with one of them being slightly warped or tweaked and then we run them through the divide blending mode we get a unique looking noise that could be handy for making procedural materials by now you might have wondered that what these two checkboxes do if i add a pure white color and then i plug it to a mix node with the blend mode set to add and i change the color of socket b to pure white as well what we now have is something beyond white because we added white on top of white and now if i duplicate this mix node and set it to subtract normally you would assume that because we're subtracting white from white a result would turn out black but we can clearly see that that's not the case here because this is not white this is not math it's something beyond white so to counter this problem we have this clamp result option which preserves our result inside a 0 to 1 range so we don't get unexpected outcomes and as for the clamp factor option turning it on means that our factor won't go higher than 1 or lower than 0 even if I set a large number like 50 it wouldn't change our result but if I turn it off it will next we have darken and lighten the darken blending mode mixes by using the darkest value of each input the results are somewhat like multiply but just harsher then we have lighten which takes the brightest parts from each input and the results are somewhat similar to the add blending mode next we have color burn which a lot of you guys found out about from a video that andrew price made what it does is that it darkens your mask but leaves the darkest and the brightest parts untouched while pushing the mid-tones towards black and being absolutely honest even i don't really know what i just told you and that's okay even though it's nice to know what's going on in the background in order to use these blending modes you just need to know their practical use cases in this case color burn is great for transitions here i have a gradient that goes from light to dark and i want to break up the transition between them with a noise texture and i can do that with the help of the color burn blending mode and at last we have these others which you will probably never use but i will still explain them to deliver my promise of explaining all the blending modes okay here we go a screen is like the opposite of multiply overlay is a combination of multiply and screen a screen gives it a smoother fading bright areas while multiply creates smooth dark areas soft light is a gentler version of overlay and linear light is a stronger harsher version of overlay difference shows the difference between the two inputs exclusion is like a more subtle version of difference Color dodge brightens the background by dividing it by the foreground. Hue replaces the foreground's hue with the backgrounds, but keeps the brightness and saturation. Saturation uses the background saturation, but keeps the foreground's hue and brightness. Value uses the background's brightness, but keeps hue and saturation from the foreground. In color, the background provides hue and saturation, whilst the foreground provides the brightness. And I think that sums it up. Honestly, I can yap about blending modes for hours, but it won't help you much until you start experimenting with them for yourself. A quick tip, you can scroll through the different modes by holding control and scrolling your mouse wheel. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I try to answer them as much as I can. Also, Follow my Instagram, goddammit. And with that said, thanks for watching. Bye. See ya.